Hallelujah. The coming of the Lord. So we need to walk in, 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 in with, with God. We need to be walking with the Lord. <clears throat> wow, what an amazing experience. And a, and, and, a, and a great responsibility to keep right with God in our heart, in our mind, in our words, in our actions, in our attitudes. Oh Lord God Almighty, help us, Jesus. Because we are, we, you know, we don't want to, we don't want to, uh, you know, have a, a cop out because of our human nature all the time. You know, it is true. We have a, our nature is not a very, our human nature is just not very good. But God has given to us everything we need to overcome. Amen. Thank God for that. God has given us everything we need to overcome. And he has given us a great plan and a great future. Hallelujah. Amen. Not only a great plan here on earth, but he's given us a great future. Hey, brother, the moment we die, the moment we die, life goes on down here, and but eternal life continues to go on forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. Amen. Amen. We need to be ready for the coming of the Lord. Amen. That's what I talked about last night, uh, last week. Uh, the rapture of the church. Amen. How glorious it's going to be. We all will, all the believers will go to paradise. If we die before Jesus picks up his church, we go to paradise. Paradise is a place that you can't, there, there's just, it, it's just hard to, and it's very difficult to, to uh, express and explain. Amen. Paul said, I heard things that I couldn't even explain. I couldn't even, I can't even talk about it. You know, I couldn't describe it. Wow. But he did say, eyes have not seen. And ears have not heard, and it yet hasn't entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them to love it. So, uh, wow, I tried to explain it a little bit. It's not an easy task to try to explain. Amen. You got, and, and even with the most beautiful words, we cannot describe what, what it will be like. Can you imagine just going up right now and being with the Lord in the presence of God? Whoa, yes. caught up in the clouds. These clouds look so beautiful this morning here. We got out of prayer meeting and, and, the, and the sunset and everything just seems so beautiful. Wow. It's amazing what the Lord has prepared for us. Amen. Hallelujah. But here in these verses, we read about a judgment. A judgment. And this judgment is not a judgment of condemnation. These two verses that we read, they are not judgments of condemnation. And they are they are uh, uh, judgments uh, uh, where a judgment where we will be in the presence of God and there we will receive our what we have done on this earth. We'll receive rewards for the things that we have done on this earth. Let's lift our voices one more time before we before we take it easy here. Just uh, listen to the word of God. Raise your hands with me and worship Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's give God some glory. Hallelujah. Let's give him some honor. Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Let's let's make sure that we got things right with the Lord this morning. Hallelujah. It, like we should every day. Amen. Like we should every day. Amen. This is not a, a self-examination once a week or once a month or once a year where we do the Holy Supper. No, baby. This is an every day, an everyday examination. We're supposed to examine ourselves, make sure everything is under the blood. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. We're asking you right now to have your way in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord, in Jesus' holy name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Wow. Hallelujah. It, by the way, it isn't every day we should be thankful. And every day, we need to make sure that we're under the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Every day. Praise God. Every day. We, you want to make it to heaven every day, you need to confess your sins. Amen. Amen. And there's uh, many sins that we commit. Praise Amen. God. Many different ways. But uh, thank God for the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. He made a way. Yeah. It's up to us to, to, uh, to use the, what he has given us so that we can make it. Hallelujah. It's up to us. But uh, after the rapture of the church, my God, I can't, you know, you, know you, see these, you see these pictures and people going up and, you know, believers going up and the 
Lord with his hands outstretched and so on. But it's got to be, it's got to be far beyond that. Amen. Amen. It's got to be far beyond. It's got to be something so great. Your greatest, most powerful experience in God. Most, the greatest, most powerful experience. Brother, brother, uh, uh, Brother Edgar, Brother Edgar and I were talking about some experiences in the Lord and he shared with me something so, so dynamic, so powerful. And, and yet, it's far beyond that. Amen. It's far beyond that. You know, think about your greatest experience that you ever had in the presence of God. Can you imagine that kind of an atmosphere forever? Can you imagine that forever? <laughs> wow, that's amazing. <laughs> so, but <laughs> once once we are raptured, we will go to the judgment seat of Christ. And there in the judgment seat of Christ, like I said, it is not, it is not a, a judgment of condemnation. The moment we are raptured to be with the Lord, we will go and be in his presence. And there, God, we're going to get a chance to see everything that we did on earth. Yep. Praise God. All the things that we've done. Yep. I thought about it the other day as I made mention. I've said it before. And I really, really thought about it again. Sometimes there's some, there's some things you need to hear again and again and again and yep. again. To find it. You know, whoa. Why am I saying that? Why, did I, why, why am I thinking that way? Well, I said, as long as I make it. Yep. it does, I don't care if I don't get no crowns and <clears throat> and, and, or anything like that, and I, you know. As long as I'm in, you know, you know, forget the crowns. I don't, I don't need no crowns. All I need is get inside, get yeah. into the, to the, to the, into the rapture of the church and be in the presence of God forever and ever and ever. You know. And then I thought about it because the Bible talks a lot about rewards. Amen. If you really start to study uh, out the, the Word of God, there are so many rewards. Look, uh, go to. A concordance and look up rewards in the New Testament. There are so many different types of rewards, you know. And so, but I said to myself, well, if God's going to give away five crowns, at least five here, here in, in, in when, when we when we stand before the judgment seat of Christ, I might as well go for them. <laughs> I, might, I might as well go for them. Why? Why should Brother Reuben or Brother Brother Ricky get all the crowns and me and I didn't have a crown up there? Thank the Lord. <laughs> Jesus, hallelujah. We better all try to get a crown up there. We ought to try to get as many crowns as we can. Amen. And the first crown that I want to talk about here for a few moments is the crown of righteousness. 1 Timothy 4 and 8. It reads as follows. 1 Timothy 4 and 8. It says, henceforth. Actually, it's right up there. If you want to follow along. Finally, henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness. There is a crown of righteousness awaiting me, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day. This is the Apostle Paul speaking. And he says, not only to me, but unto all those that love his appearing. Amen. Amen. How many love the Lord? Amen. How many love the Lord? How many love his appearing? If you're thinking about Jesus, if you're thinking about you want to see Jesus someday, you're loving his appearing. You're thinking about his appearing. We are supposed to be encouraging ourselves with these words. Amen. We're supposed to be encouraged. We're supposed to be talking about this. Amen. Someday we're going to see Jesus. Not once a year. Not every other month. We're supposed to be talking about the coming of the Lord. We're supposed to be thinking about the coming of the Lord. Amen. We're supposed to be preparing our, <coughs> excuse me, for the for the coming of the Lord. We're supposed to be preparing ourselves. Hallelujah. Walking in, in closeness with the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. But he wants us to think about his coming. We're, we're to encourage ourselves and get ready. This crown is given to those who love the Lord's appearing and for living a righteous life on this earth. And a righteous life simply is living as if you've never sinned. And that simply means live under the blood. Because when you're under the blood, it's all cleansed. It's all washed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
we're supposed to live a righteous life. Hallelujah. And when you live a righteous life, you're going to overcome sin, guilt, condemnation, inferiority, and fear. You will overcome it. You will experience peace, greater joy. All your needs will be met. God loves the righteous. He gives peace, favor. His eyes are upon them, upon the righteous, and his ears are open to the prayer, their prayers. And every statement that I just said is scriptural. I got a scripture to back up everyone. It'd be, a whole, it'd be a, just a study on this today. Hallelujah. Jesus will deliver you out of your trouble, your afflictions. He will not forsake you, and you will never beg for bread. Mm. You will never be moved, and you will walk in victory. Yeah. So there's something about walking and living in righteousness. Amen. And if you want a crown of righteousness, you're going to have to walk in righteousness. Mm. The crown of righteousness is for every person to get saved. Amen. 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 Righteousness. We need to love righteousness. Brother, there's something about being right with God that is amazing. It's amazing Amen. to not have to walk around feeling guilty, condemned, inferior, fearful, anxious, stressful. We, we experience it. We experience it more than we want to admit. Mm -hmm. But thank God, again, the Lord has fixed it up. Thank you, Jesus. So that we could get it right. All right, I know. Get it right. In Jesus' name. Crown of righteousness. Then there's a crown, an incorruptible crown. That's found in 1 Corinthians 9 and 25. Hallelujah. The crown, the crown of an incorruptible crown. And every man that strives for the mastery is temperate. That means he's self-controlled in all things. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we are incorruptible. Right now there's a World Series. They're all, they're all, by the way, Houston, if you didn't notice, they're three and oh. <laughs> they're three and oh. So if they win one more game, it's over. And I don't think the other team is gonna come back and win four straight, there's just no way. I win one or maybe in New York and they'll come home and get me here to the Houston crowd. Well, anyway, I shouldn't really do that. That's, that's a whole different story. <laughs> but, but they're, 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 they're uh, 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 controlling themselves. They're, they're preparing themselves. They've been working all, you know, to, to win a series. They're giving their all. They have to do so much to prepare to win and every sport in every sport there is preparation if you box you're going to stay away from drinking and party and staying up late at night you're going to stay away from smoking and doping and everything else because you need to you need to be ready for the fight every every sport and so but they're doing it to win a crown here. They're doing it to win a reward here on earth. But our, our reward is a heavenly reward. Amen. Our reward is uh, up in heaven. Hallelujah. Yes. And so the incorrupt, this incorruptible crown is a crown for people who brought their body under subjection. They disciplined their body. They are those who push themselves to stay, stay spiritual, spiritually minded, live in a spiritual dimension, who controlled what they heard, what they said, and what they did. Mm. Wow. That is very powerful. That, by the way, that's the only way we can sin. There's only three ways we can sin. Mind, mouth, and actions. So we need to watch our mouth. We need to watch our actions. We need to watch what we do. Amen. And the, these people control themselves. Those, this, this crown is for those that have controlled themselves, control their mouths, control their attitude, control their actions. You keep 
this body under control by being prayerful. And even that is a discipline. You discipline yourself to not do some things, but you also discipline yourself to do some things. Amen. And you must discipline yourself to pray. Yeah. You must discipline. Brother, this flesh does not want to pray. This flesh does not want to get up and, and pray. This flesh does not want to. Honey, but if you don't do it, if you don't discipline yourself, your body, your, your body will be like a wild horse. So we must discipline, we must control, uh, uh, keep this body under control. You do it by praying, by staying obedient to the word of God. Hallelujah. Honey, it's a, in order to be obedient to the word of God, you need to stay close to God. Amen. Because the body rejects, the body fights against the things of God. The mind fights against it. It's going to take some fasting. Seeking after God, hallelujah. It's, it, it takes praising and worshiping, even when you don't feel like it. Mm -hmm. Even when things are not going well, even when things are not going right, you still must push yourself because you know that in the presence of God is fullness of joy, there's pleasure. And by the way, what has he done wrong to us? Nothing. He's not done us wrong. People may do us wrong, but God has never done us wrong. Hallelujah. So we must keep our body under subjection. Hallelujah. And worship and follow the guidance of the Holy Ghost. How do you follow the guidance of the Holy Ghost? Just stay in the Word. Simply, you know, we don't got to get all mysterious and all. Ooh, we're being led by the Spirit of God. Ooh, no, 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 no. Just obey the Word of God. Yeah. Just do what it says. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Just do what the Bible says and you're being led by the Spirit. Mm -hmm. Amen. Be obedient to the Word of God and you're being, you're being led by the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. Glory. The other day I, I taught, I preached at, uh, at a church for Pastor's Day. And, uh, and uh, I said something. I said, well, do you know that when you obey, matter of fact, brother, it was interesting, brother. Brother read that scripture this morning, Hebrews chapter 13. There's a lot of good stuff there in that chapter, brother. You will read it this morning. And uh, it says, Obey them that have the rule over you. It says, Obey your pastor, he'll be able to deliver you. And I said, Wow. When you obey your pastor, you're obeying God. Because God is saying, Obey your pastor. Mm -hmm. Isn't that powerful? I, wow. I need to go study a little bit more about what pastors did. <laughs> There's a lot of responsibility, a lot of authority there. Whoa, you better use it right. You got to use it right. God gives you authority. God gives you, God gives you leadership in any role. But if you don't use it right, whoa, is that man? God help us <laughs> to do things the right way. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. With the right spirit, right attitude, with the right motives. Then we have the crown of life. The crown of life, found in James 1 and 12. The crown of life, wow, three crowns. Crown of life. The Bible says, blessed is the man that endures temptation. For when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. Amen. Uh, the last couple of weeks we've talked about temptation mm -hmm. in our care and share groups and uh, and uh, we're all tempted and that's just that's the fact we all get tempted Jesus was tempted in all ways mm -hmm. in every way as a human being he was tempted mm -hmm. yes, sir. but without sin mm -hmm. amen and, and we will be tempted yes. but that word temptation does not only mean, you know, being tempted to do something wrong. The word temptation also has to do with troubles and trials. We study it out all the way, not just go into the area of, you know, being tempted to do something wrong. It has to do also with being tempted, going through temptation or times of trial and trouble. Okay? And so, so this crown 
the Bible says, blessed is the man that endures temptation, troubles, or trials. For when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. This crown is for them who have continued to walk faithfully with God during trials and tribulation. There are many troubles and many tribulations that are going to come to us. There we're going to experience many. Life is filled with, with sorrow and hurt and pain. And, and, and it's, 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 it's filled with, with troubles and difficulties and challenges and tears and crying and grief. And hurt. Life is filled. Jesus said, in this world you shall have tribulation. That means you're going to have troubles and trials and difficulties and challenges and hurts and pain and suffering. But he did also say, but be a good cheer. Cheer up. I've overcome. I've overcome so that you can overcome. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, so the, this crown is for those that have gone uh, continue to be faithful. When troubles and trials come to some, you know what happens? Bye bye. They're gone. Because they can't endure. Amen. Amen. When troubles and trials and difficulties and challenges come, some, you know, they stop going to church. That's the worst thing you can do. You don't want to stop going to church. Why would you stop going to church? Honey, there's some. Uh, the other day, when. We were talking the other day. It's encouraging coming to be around a bunch of, hey, yeah, there may be some hypocrites in the church. You know, because some people say, oh, there's a bunch of hypocrites go to that church. Yeah, there may be some hypocrites in the church. I'd rather be with some hypocrites in church than to be with some hypocrites out in the world. Amen. Amen. There may be some people that are not right that come to church. Amen. <laughs> But that's no excuse for nobody. That's right. We're always making excuses Amen. because so and so or so. We got to learn to face our, Amen. our responsibilities. Amen. For ourselves. Amen. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. And so we, you know, but there's some folks. That's it. They, and then and then they become lukewarm and cold. And then little by little, they're just falling out on the wayside. Mm. They're no longer useful for the kingdom. And, and their testimony is going down and goes down and down. And then eventually, and then if they repent and get right with God, they already made a mess with all the people that they've been in contact with. Because they go cry, oh, the things are not going good. I, I, I don't go to church. No more. Ah. And then they get they repent because a good evangelist comes by. Hallelujah. They get ready, right with God. And then they, oh, now I'm ready to serve Jesus. Oh, I love Jesus so much. And then, but then, look at all the mess you made already. That's what happened. Now you got to go, how are you going to go back and fix it up? They look at you like, oh, what kind of guy are you, man? Back in church again. And then some are like, like the yo-yo. They're in and out and in and out and in and out. So can you imagine how much God help us? Amen. That's why I said, blessed is the man that endures temptation, Amen. that goes through troubles Praise and trials. God. For when he is tried, you, when he, he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life which the Lord has promised to them that love him. Amen. We will face them many times in life, but this crown is, been, it is for those who have, been, who have not been discouraged. Who, honey, I'm going to tell you something. Everyone can get discouraged. I, I can get dis discouraged at mo for moments. And then I got to get a hold of myself. I got to breathe in. <sighs> okay. <laughs> I got to breathe in. Okay. Okay, I'm going to handle this. Okay. <laughs> you get disappointed. Because, uh, you know, hey, you can see things that don't go over the middle of right what's going on here. And then you're messing up and you're blowing it yourself. And in the middle of that, you're trying to. Get yourself fixed up and woo. And you just gotta breathe in. All right, we're gonna make it. We're gonna get through this. All right, we're gonna fix this up in Jesus' name. Amen. Because if you don't do it, it gets worse. Praise God. We are supposed to fight the good fight of faith. We are supposed to resist. And honey, if you're in leadership, if you're you got a place of leadership, 
And, and all of you are leaders because you're a leader either at home, somewhere, on the job, somewhere, at church, in any way, some way. Then you're gonna be, you're gonna have to face the music. You're gonna have to, you're gonna have to uh, face the, the realities of life. And so this crown is for those who have been who have not been discouraged and who have marched forward during difficulties and challenge, challenges. John wrote in the book of Revelation, chapter 2, verse 10, he said, Be thou faithful unto death. And I will give thee a crown of life. Many of the, the New Testament church, the early early the early church uh, folks, they, they 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 died as martyrs. They died as martyrs. They gave their lives swallowed up by by lions and fire, burnt in the fires and crucified on the crosses upside down. I mean, they they suffered. <coughs> And, and, and to be very honest with you, we live in a very blessed country. Amen. A very blessed country Amen. because there are people outside of our country that are going through great persecution Amen. for the gospel. Amen. 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 A great persecution. Great persecution. Many have been killed for their faith and many would be killed if they were only found out to be believers in Christ Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. But the Lord said, be thou faithful unto death. We need to die spiritually. We need, to, we need to die. We need to die to this flesh. We need to die to this flesh. Amen. We need to die daily. Paul said, I am crucified with Christ. I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave his life for me. So we need to live a, a crucified life. We need to, wow, we need to die daily to the things of this world. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We should not love the things of this world. This is the command. We should not love the things of this world. We need to love the things of God. Hallelujah. And so this crown is for those who have confronted persecution, troubles and trials, and have overcome them in the name of the Lord. Amen. Amen. And then there's another crown. This crown is the crown of glory. You find this in the first book of Peter, chapter 5, verses 2 through 4. The crown of glory. Wow. You see a crown that you like? Crown of righteousness. Crown of a, a, an incorruptible crown. A crown for discipline. A crown for walking in righteousness. A crown for going through troubles and trials. Being able to... Uh, to overcome. Here's another one. <laughs> Feed the flock of God. Which is among you. Feed the flock of God. Which is among you. Wow. Take the oversight thereof. In other words. Shepherd the, the, the folks of God. Feed them. Not by constraint. Not because you're forced to. But willingly. Not for filthy lucre, for filthy money, filthy greens. Hallelujah. There's not too many greens anymore. Amen. Filthy computers. <laughs> filthy, filthy phones. <laughs> Look at it. <laughs> not, 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 not for, not for this purpose. Don't do it for that. But of a ready mind. Willie, you want to. Don't be lords over God's heritage. Be examples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd shall appear, you shall receive a crown of glory that fades not away. Amen. Wow. Woo, somebody shout hallelujah. 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 Amen. 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 You prayed for me, and I'm with that one. <laughs> the crown of glory. Praise Amen. the Lord. Crown of glory is a crown for every person who feeds teaches, cares for the flock willingly with a passion and wholeheartedness. This includes pastors, apostles, prophets, evangelists, teachers, ministers, and their wives who have faithfully assisted their husbands. Wow. 
Yeah. If it wasn't for some wives, pastors, evangelists, prophets, apostles would not go very far. But they're one, so they need to be a part of this, this, this crown. Praise the Lord. Maybe we'll, we'll, we'll share it. We'll put it on both of our heads at the same time. <laughs> but, amen. Look, this crown is, is for those who are equipping the saints for uh, not uh, who are equipping the saints not for money, not for prestige, not to have a power trip. Hello, not to have a power trip. Not not to be in control. Not for recognition, not to be popular, not to have a spirit of dominance or lead through manipulation. Whoa. Oh, Lord. Crown of glory. This is the kind of, this is the spirit of the leader and leaders and ministers and ministries. Because there's a lot of people that get a little a little authority and my God, it goes to their head. Amen. And they got an attitude and they walk around like they got, they're the mighty. You know, no, we're not the mighty. We're under the mighty. We serve the mighty. Amen. Hallelujah. We got to give glory to the mighty. Amen. He deserves all the glory and honor yes. and praise. Yeah, yes. This is not about no power trip or, right. or, or to, for some prestige so people can know who I am. Mm -hmm. It's not about us. Everything that has to do with, with me and my and I is, is the flesh. And that's why we become selfish because me, my, and I, God help us. That's right. There's a world that is lost that Jesus. needs Jesus Christ. Jesus. This crown is for those who faithfully serve in the kingdom of a ready mind and as examples to the flock. Hallelujah. Wow. That's a, that's a, you need to pray for your pastor, praise God. We need to pray for the men of God. There are many, there are many, I, I thought about this on different occasions. Says, wow, many great men have fallen. I wonder how many people really pray for them. Yeah. Hallelujah. And then there's a fifth crown. And this is another one I want. I want this crown too, praise God. I want all of them. <laughs> but this is another crown I want here. 1 Thessalonians 2 and 19. For what is our hope? What is our joy? What is our joy? What is, what is, what is our joy or crown of rejoicing? What is our crown of rejoicing? That's a question. Are not even you in the presence of the Lord? Jesus Christ at his coming. Paul is saying, my joy, my expectation, my anticipation is, my rejoicing is knowing that you're going to make it, knowing that you're going to be in the presence of God. Hallelujah. Your crown of rejoicing is a soul winner's crown. This is for those who win souls. Paul tells the Thessalonians that his hope his anticipation, his expectation, his joy and crown of rejoicing was that they would be ready to be in the presence of the Lord when he comes back. Amen. Amen. My God, that is what brings joy to, to the, our heart when you're a soul winner. When you're a soul winner, just to, my God, it's such a blessing to see people that you've influenced, that you've impacted. Amen. Amen. Look what the Lord has done. Amen. Hallelujah. 
the fruit of righteousness. The Proverbs 11, 30 says, the fruit of the righteous is a tree of life. When you live a righteous life, you're going to be a tree of life. You're going to give life, not death. You, life and death is in the power of the tongue. And when you live righteously, what comes out of your mouth is going to be life. And sometimes life does not mean that you get to hear all these little sweet, you're so pretty and you're so, you're so nice and you're so good and you're so wonderful and you just, just, uh, no, 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 no. Truth is what sets us free. Truth is what makes us, makes us uh, uh, beautiful in the presence of God. Hallelujah. Matter of fact, sometimes, uh, that's a bad man, I had a marriage on my mind these last couple of days because I had to prepare. I said, oh Lord, I'm failing here. I'm failing my wife here. And I said, oh Lord, I got to get, I got to fix some things up. I got to take a day off. Hallelujah. Take my wife out or something. <laughs> you know, got to get things right. Uh, amen. That's in the Bernays. I'm, re I'm live right now. <laughs> I'm recording. But, 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 uh, but the thing is, I bet there's a bunch of amens in there. <laughs> But the, the, the fact of the matter, though, is this. You know, uh, uh, we are people that walk in righteousness. And we may fail in some areas of our life, but again, I say, God always has a way to fix it up. Yeah. So that we can be right in his presence. Yeah. Amen. And, and, and the fruit of righteousness is the tree of life. We're supposed to speak life to people. We're supposed to speak life, not death. You speak life when you tell them what is the word of the Lord, when you tell them what's right, amen. You speak life uh, when you go contrary to the negative thinking and you stick to the word of God, hallelujah. The word of God is life. Yeah. We're giving life, we're speaking life, we're at, uh, hallelujah. When you do that, you'll start acting and giving life to the other one. Hallelujah. Praise God. The fruit of, of, of righteousness is a tree of life. And then it says, and he says, and he that winneth souls, and he that winneth souls is wise. Wow. There is power in this little verse here, Proverbs 11, 3. He that winneth souls is wise. Amen. And Daniel 12 and 3, the scripture says in Daniel 12 and 3, and they be wise. They that be wise, those that are wise, shall shine as the brightness of the firmament. And they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. Hallelujah. Wow. Ooh, Lord Jesus. What a tremendous, what a tremendous thing. Hallelujah. That, that, that this crown, of this soul winner's crown. I want to encourage everyone at HOPCC. Hallelujah. That sounds that's that stands for House of Praise Community Center. <laughs> I want to encourage everyone at HOPCC to be involved in care and share groups. Get involved in the evangelistic cycle, working together to grow our church through evangelism and discipleship. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Man, we, this is the will of God. This is God's desire for us. God wants to bless us. When I stand before the Lord, I've thought about it. I, you know, this is, you know, we've thought about the coming of the Lord many times in 50 some years, praise God. Hallelujah. Well, we've been to many, many funerals and have heard about death and, and life after that and the promises, the, the hopes that we have in the hope that we have in God. But when you really consider it for yourself, uh, one day we're going to stand before the Lord. I used to think, how am I going to stand before the Lord? You know, we, we, we you know, sometimes some, we get a little emotional, we get, get a little carried away, you know, and we're going to fall, we're going to, uh, you know, we're going to jump up and down in the presence of the Lord, and we're going to running the running the aisles in front of the you know before the Lord and we're gonna be dancing. I don't know. All I know it's gonna be good. All I know it's gonna be good. But when I stand before the Lord by myself, whoo Lord Jesus, I'm gonna be able to at least smile, be respectful, and be reverent. No 
nonsense. <laughs> no foolishness. I, I'm going to be for the Lord. Hallelujah. I want to be able to lift my head up. Look at him. The song says, it will be worth it all when we see Jesus. Hallelujah. It will be worth it all when we see Jesus. Life's trials will seem so small. Amen. When we see Jesus. Praise God. And we look upon his face, the one who saved us by his grace. Look upon his face, the one who saved us by his grace. Hallelujah. What a day, glorious day that it will be. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let's lift our hands, let's lift our voices, let's lift our hearts, and let's just worship Jesus for a few moments here. Praise.